Good morning and welcome. This is Mike Harris on Revolution Radio. Today is Friday, October 3rd, 2014, and I am very pleased to have as my guest today my my, my friend and probably the best-looking guest I've ever had. Well, one of the best-looking ones. Uh, <laughs> Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot. Carrie, how are you? Welcome to the show. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. I'm fine. I'm fine. How you doing? <laughs> I, I'm doing good today. Actually, I'm, I'm I'm in a very good mood. I I, I watched your interview last night with uh, with Rick Miller, uh, Doctor Richard Allen Miller. I, I couldn't help myself but to call in in the last five minutes and interject myself on, on your show. But uh, it was a great interview, and I, I tell you what, you know, Rick Miller has got some depth to him. He 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 yeah. really does. He's uh. You know, just just fascinating. I love how you handle him. You, you do such a <laughs> such, such a great job on on your interviews, and you you really get him to to cop to things that he doesn't want to cop to. <laughs> yeah, I, I play with him like a cat does a mouse. No, just kidding. Uh, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's kind of I, true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just you know he he is he is so much fun because you know the thing is that he has such a great sense of humor and. And, you know, in this sector we're in, there's so much seriousness, right? And he's talking, he could be talking about, like, something really deep and really serious, but he has such a, a great sense of humor about it. So uh, a sense of humor is, like, indispensable as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know, people may not know this, but I'm I'm often sort of fucking with <laughs> I guess I just blew a couple of rules there. <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're screwing with them. Let us know phrase. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm screwing with my guests, you know, to, uh, to actually, uh, in my head, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm laughing a lot. Uh, I may seem like I'm very serious and stuff, but sometimes I'm just, uh, I, I really like to mess with them. So. Well, He's well, one of those guys, and, and then he lets me do that. So, so we have fun. We have a little yep. echo. I think your volume is a little high on your end. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Just a touch. There you go. Much better. Yeah. Okay. How, but, how's but, that? Is that better? Much better. Well, let, let me tell you one thing about Rick Miller. Uh, you know, I've been a karate jujitsu man now for 46 years. I, I've been training since I was 14 years old. Um, yeah, I, I can recognize in another person. And Rick said, well, I, I, I practice Kung Fu. I've been doing this. And, you know, by golly, he went through a little short Kung Fu routine. And the, for a man his age, he moves like a cat, and you, you wouldn't want to screw with him. I mean, he's, he's really got it. He, he's got the he, – I mean, when, when you have it, you can see it in others. He's got it. That's awesome. That's it is. Cool. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it's very awesome. Anyway, I was just in the process. I've not finished it yet, but I'm watching your interview with Scott Bennett. Uh, oh, you are okay. Yes, I am. I'm. I'm not through it yet. It's a. It's a. It's a very long interview. It's uh, three hours plus. Uh, so I've not finished it. So I'm. I'm going to be speaking a little bit. Um, you know, with without an adequate knowledge base, but wow. Um. He really blows the, the lid off ISIS and uh, where the money for ISIS is coming from and, and what goes with it and uh, you know everything else. Why don't you give us an overview and, and tell us you know what the content of the interview are so we can get some people, uh, some listeners out there to go listen to it because this is something people need to know. This is where the if you follow the money, you can find out who's providing the material support for terrorism. And and really, that's what Scott's done. Uh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, th this this guy is kind of where the rubber meets the road for, <laughs> you know, this uh, so-called war on terror. I mean, what a stupid, you know, uh, that's just like an oxymoron. You don't make war on terror. Terror, <laughs> terror is war, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, well, okay. So so you know, we we know that this is a. <clears throat> people in our sector know that this is a play that is put on for the benefit of the masses um, and and to mess with them and to eliminate the young men at a certain age, especially in, in certain Middle Eastern countries, and so the, the competition is not is not there, and uh, and and the intellect as well. Uh, it's you know, it is really a screwed up thing. And then it's it's all about selling weapons and it's all about keeping their own troops. Uh it's kinda like cannon fodder. Um 
<clears throat> for the real battles. I mean, you, you have these huge militaries, you have this huge military budget here in, in this country. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and, and, and what goes on is, is these people are basically needing a theater in which to operate. And so you can't have these, these military guys sitting around on their hands for, for decades and expect to stay sharp. So they, 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 they actually drum up these wars and this is really how they do it. Now, uh, Scott Bennett is, is an army counterintelligence officer and he was a second lieutenant was his rank. Um, he is not a regular en enlisted man, and I think that's key to understanding something of his psychology that predisposed him even to be a whistleblower on a certain level. Um, so he, 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 he actually was put into a position because uh, he ran into Rumsfeld. He said some, some very right comments. Uh, he came under the notice of a general, a top general, um, and, and because of that, he, he got sort of moved up kind of in a very quick way after he served in the Bush administration on a rather, um, a more mundane level, semi mundane level. So, so, so it was kind of like they thought he was thinking along their lines. And so he got in under the radar. And then what happens is he, and it's really kind of funny. I relate to it because I'm, uh, it, in the entertainment industry, I was a little like that. In other words, I was a round peg in a square hole the same way he was in the military because I had an education from Northern California and, and also from, from going back east and studying, uh, you know, uh, studying, you know, directing and acting and so on and so forth. So when I got to Hollywood, I was hip to a lot of things and I didn't have the right attitude, but they didn't know that. So I looked good on paper, so they, you know, I went into some very high level slots, and then I would, you know, I would interfere with shit. I would have the wrong attitude. I would say the wrong things. I would, you know, uh, I wouldn't kiss ass. I wouldn't fall into rank the way you're supposed to do because you can't, you can't rise up in Hollywood unless you're in an old boys network. So there's a parallel there in the army and in the military because it's an old boys network. Anyway. This is sort of long story short. I can't tell it like he can tell it. So I, I encourage everyone to li to watch my interview with him. He's uh, dynamic. He is uh, he's unrelent. He's absolutely relentless. Uh, he is uh, he he basically got fucked with so majorly because he tried to make change. He tried to clean up their act. He tried to win a war. That they had no intention on winning, well, so well, he, well, he well, them, well, gave well, them well, strategy. These, these issues here, because this is something that people need to understand. And you know, we we look back at Korea. We never won Korea. It's still an open wound. We did not win um, Vietnam. We have not won Iraq. We've not won Afghanistan. They want these wars to stay open. They want to be able to charge for their 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 services, their contracts. And it's not just the military, but all of the military, uh, uh, you know, it's the entire military industrial complex wants these things to keep going because it enhances their bottom line. The Department of Defense budget is the largest corporate welfare in the world. And, and these guys don't want to win wars. They don't d design weapon platforms to be as effective as they could be. They, they design them with flaws so that they can have a reason to stay fighting so they have a reason to continue to improve and it, it's it's such a disappointment and it just really drives home the point that we need regime change in this country and we need it now and go go ahead Carrie. i'm sorry yeah. to interrupt uh, i just had well, to no, get no, on my soapbox no absolutely mike and you know you're you're absolutely right uh this is what we're talking about we're talking about a machine that needs to be oiled uh, and, and that they want to just run the machine because it makes them money, number one. Okay. First and foremost, we're talking about the sales of weapons. Uh, we're talking about money that, that they need to make in order to, uh, to, to keep people employed in the aerospace industry, let's say, here in this country and, and really worldwide because we're talking about a secret space program that's, that's also relentless. Um, and then they they need a theater to to try their guys out and to try different different weapons out behind the scenes, 
and then know that they will work off planet in other cir- circumstances. So you can appreciate the surface Earth has now become a battleground, a proving ground. And this that, is what that, about- that's better. It, it is a proving ground. It's where they take them out to test them. So they can engage them in off-world... And they do not tell us when they are testing a new weapon. I mean, you know, get that, you know, through your head. Because... Because that's that's what's going on out there. They're not just using conventional stuff, okay? Every once in a while, under the cover of night or whatever it happens to be, they roll something out, and that's going on. And then they've got soldiers that are, you know, maybe even don't know that they're part of of a program and that they have been messed with, and maybe they, you know, maybe it's a bioweapon, and they've been, you know, uh, inculcated maybe against it temporarily, or maybe it's going to resurface in their life later on. Who knows? I mean, it's it's amazing stuff. Now he's not going there yet. Okay, he we didn't have that kind of discussion. So I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking what he talks about, and I'm actually putting it in the context of what I know, which is the secret space program and the real what's really going on uh, behind the scenes here. But I can tell you that, that how he outlines his story is really telling you how they mess with people who are good, honorable, well-trained, even by at their own hand, very well-intentioned military guys, and they're shut up. They're fucked with. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I know uh, that's that, that, that that's three. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just yeah. you know I I had a I stay up late at night and then I sleep it too late and the whole thing is crazy. So anyway, um, but <laughs> so but the thing is that what what happens is he he step by step. It's it's amazing, and he caught them at their own game. He he basically was so what you might say kind of wide eyed and innocent, and bought the whole you know sort of Kool Aid thing. But at the same time, he was like he was like a taskmaster for them, and he brought to the table from the outside world, so to speak, outside the military, his training in advertising and understanding how to sell a message, how and the, and psychology, like the psychology of of Al Qaeda and a, a person who in, is brought up in in the Middle East to to go be a uh, a suicide bomber, right? And so he is all about breaking through that psychology and you know, and knowing that you're not going to ever sell democracy to this people, which is one of the things he put in his writings. We we didn't get to talk about that in depth, but it's a very important issue and point that he makes, which is shows you how astute. And he's a PhD, so he is, you know, he he's intellectually and also not to be fucked with, uh, messed with. So um, the thing is that uh, that that he really. Put a wrench in their game, and then, strangely, uh, fortuitously, in fact, too fortuitously for it to be an accident, he was put into a a prison for, I guess, white collar a white collar prison. I forget the name of it, and I think it's in upstate New York, if I got it right, or Pennsylvania somewhere. And uh, he basically was immediately connected with the guy he who could give him the background to substantiate all of the suspicions he had of the holes in the network of fighting terrorism that he was beginning to find that had to do with the financial, um, basically, support of terrorism, tracking down the money trail. And so there, there was a Swiss banker who had come over from Switzerland who was actually American and was living in Switzerland as a Swiss banker and very, knew his stuff inside out, called Birkenfeld, who apparently hit the news a couple of years ago before he, his story, and, uh, and, and was in there serving some 40, 40, I think it was 40 months. Um, at any rate, they connected immediately, and Birkenfeld had, knew where all the bodies were buried in terms of the Swiss bank accounts that are funding terrorism. And being allowed to fund terrorism, in fact, you know, being facilitated by Swiss banks, basically, and that there was nineteen thousand of them. I mean, this this is like astronomical, right? How could you turn around to somebody and say, "I've got nineteen thousand accounts that are proven to be funding terrorism"? That's just, you know, that's off the charts. So, 
you know, even if you question some of them, by the end of the day, you're going to be, you're going to have a, a, a very substantial handful there. And, and the fact that they are knowledgeable about it. So he flew over to America to tell our, you know, the Congress and so on and so forth. And they, they shut the doors in his face. They wouldn't let him testify. They wouldn't let him report it to the military so that they could be aware of it. Nothing. Zero. In fact, they, 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 they sent it back to not only a, there was a Vanity Fair journalist who was supposed to do a story on him who got a text uh, in the car with the guy in the car, basically from his, his editor saying, shut it down. We're not allowed to do this story. Uh, you know, you're done. And, and the journalist folded, uh, as, as they will do. And then, uh, the guy had to go. He, I guess he went back to his country. Uh, they got him on what's called a DUI, you know, uh, driving under the influence, which was, uh, some so kind that, of trunk up that, charge. That got Skip Tatum on a couple of weeks ago, too. Well, well, it's interesting because what happened was there's some kind of weird scenario and, Really, I mean, we, it's a very in-depth interview, and I pretty much let the guy talk and tell his story. I didn't, I didn't do what I do many times, uh, you know, when I'm sort of messing with somebody and trying to get them uh, out of their program. I let this guy do his thing because he had a story that you know had a consecutive. You needed to follow it in a consecutive way. Because I'm on here now, I'm basically you know going to tell you uh, what more is going on there. So he said. Snowden happened to see Birkenfeld go down on on this DUI and know that it was fabricated. And he also knew about the Swiss bank accounts funding terrorism. And he was in Switzerland at the time. So there was a crossover with Snowden's story, which is, is, is another amazing fortuitous event. Not only that, but the WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks also factors in here because there are WikiLeaks cables that also substantiate the flow of money this way. So you have Julian Assange, you know, factoring in here. So what happens is all of this stuff also went to the, the journalist who handles Snowden, uh, for the Guardian, um, Greenwald. And basically, he, his assistant got all the information. I don't know what Greenwald, if he saw it, he didn't see it, what, there was snafu, whatever. Bottom line is they never reported it either. This whole thing about the Swiss bank accounts just got buried. And they paid the guy off, they paid this Birkenfeld off $104 million to shut him up. And he, and he took the money. And, um, maybe he also got his life threatened. I mean, you can imagine what, what goes on. But before that, all, I, before this, before he got shut up, they basically, he was still in prison and, and rat, literally into his no, lap. No. No, Falls. Scott Birkenfeld was in prison. Uh, yeah. Still. Okay, he came no, to no, no, was that, Scott. Okay. They got him on Scott? a DUI, and then uh, then they got him in some kind of technicality. Uh, I I don't know what it was. I can't remember. That was some frame up that threw him into a U.S. prison. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and well, then why, why was Scott Bennett walks. in prison? What, what was he doing there? What was his his okay, business in prison? Scott Bennett's prison thing was a, a complete frame up. And it was, it, it was actually, it, it's actually illegal. And, and it, it, he shows the collusion between the Obama administration, uh, the State Department, the, uh, you know, what I, you know, I didn't get a ask, chance to ask him really if there were Department of Homeland Security was basically involved, but I, it had to be. Um, and, and, and the military and, uh, Eric Holder. And, and basically the, the word came down from, from above to screw with this guy. He had not even unpacked his bags because he had already started, um, you know, criticizing and, uh, and finding fault with the way that, that, that this Dove Zackheim was running this, this counterterrorism, uh, outfit in Booz Allen Hamilton. And, uh, he was a military man. At that point, he he had rank in in the military, and they brought in a civilian charge against him, which you're not you're not allowed to do. And they said he brought his guns in illegally onto the base when, in fact, these guys travel that way, and he had complete authorization. Uh, it was a paperwork thing where he's supposed to fill out the paperwork, and he was busy, you know, doing whatever. Uh, uh, let, me, let me toss something in here real quick. Dove Zakheim, he's got a, a, a very rich history himself. And yes. just for, for those of you who don't remember, 
Um, whenever Donald Rumsfeld announced on September 10th, 2001, that the Pentagon was short uh, $2.3 trillion, Dove Zakheim was the controller for the Pentagon at that time, just so you know who was supposed to be watching the money that disappeared. It was Dove Zakheim. That's the guy. That's right. Yeah. And uh, and I actually think it's more money than that, as I recall it. Uh, but... But, well, but that, that, that's what Rumsfeld over. copped to. That, 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 that's what Rumsfeld copped to. He had that the press conference. It was at 10 a.m. Washington time, uh, right. where he announced that uh, on September 10th, 2001, the day before 9/11, yes. that uh, that the Pentagon was short two point could not account for 2.3 trillion dollars. Now, now, Carrie, I think you're right. I think that number is probably closer to nine or ten trillion dollars <laughs> today. Uh, because they they never found it, and they keep losing it, and uh, they they're, they're they they keep feeding all of these black uh, programs that are supporting the secret space program, and you know, we'll yeah, get to how, that in a minute. How do you here. do business otherwise? I mean, you you really see their conundrum, right? I mean, they've got to get this money from everywhere, and and drugs is just sale of drugs just isn't going to do it. <laughs> Uh, it, it's you know it's really interesting conundrum. Uh, you know it's it's funny how 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 much they do right under the noses of the general public, and there's just like no one's the wiser. I mean, how, how do you come forward to to the American people and say, oh by the way, you know uh, <laughs> this money is gone. We don't know where it went. And and next, <laughs> well, what, what you do is is you you disguise it. You, you hide it with a masking event like 9-11 was. That's, what it, that's part of 9-11's purpose was to mask that theft. And then you look at what is now the fact that the Pentagon was struck with a cruise missile and uh, 35 of the 50 NCIS investigators who were assigned to uh, Project Able Danger were killed that day in that part of the Pentagon. So uh, the Able, Able Danger effort lost 35 of their 50 investigators that day, uh, and it really was a setback. So it just tells you how powerful the, these dark forces that have hijacked our government are, that whenever good forces within our government are, are trying to get to the bottom of these things, that the bad guys kill them. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just how it works. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it... it there is more to the story. So here we have Scott Bennett, and he he's basically framed, uh, you know. And I actually have have somebody who texts me just to remind me. Yes, he. he <laughs> they also arrested him for wearing his uniform, uh, <laughs> on the base. I mean, you know, how can you get a civilian arrest you for wearing your uniform? You know, a, a civilian court. I mean, this this stuff that was done to him. They made it up as they went along, and it was it's just completely off the it's off the charts. He thought it was an operation to test him because you know the military does do that. I mean, you know, agencies we've seen movies where they test people. You know, they 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 say they're you know they're being tracked, they're do, doing this or that, and then it ends up to be a test to, to make sure that they know their stuff, right? So he the whole time. It, it, it's it's almost it's kind of heartbreaking because here you have such a well well intentioned young officer who is so good at his game and and yet he he believes these people and so he believed that that even when they were completely screwing him over and and he had generals or or, or other people saying look this will just blow over don't worry about it he even had a lawyer. Who, who was supposed to be very good at his, his job, tell him the same thing, and they screwed him completely. And uh, because on a certain level, his guard was down. He believed these people would protect him, take care of him, uh, as as anyone in the Army or, or, or one of the services does at the time when they're working for these people. Um, and and you, they just weren't there for him at all. In fact, they were part of a conspiracy against this guy. Okay, well, let, let, let's talk about the conspiracy when we come back. We've got a short break right now. We'll be back in a couple minutes, folks. More with Carrie Cassidy of ProjectCamelot.com. We'll be right back. Stick with us. Good morning and welcome back. This is Mike Harris on Revolution Radio. Today is Friday, October 3rd, 2014. My guest today is Carrie Cassidy of Project Camelot. Carrie, welcome back. And, and let's talk about this conspiracy because, you know, the portions of the interview that I've had the time to listen to so far, this guy put the 
Senate uh, Intelligence Committee on notice as to what he had discovered relative to uh, where the funding, the material support for terrorism of ISIS, ISIL, uh, all, all of that is coming from. And, and they did nothing. They, they knew about this in July of 2012. Uh, it, it, it seems to be that they're a little bit remiss in their duty. <laughs> well, I, actually, they they knew before then, uh, as it happens, uh, he was finding this information out. I think this happened in 2009. I mean, he's been in, in prison now uh, and was, was getting all of the background from this, this contact, Birkenfeld, who was also in prison, for two years. He just got out in February. Uh, so what he had discovered, he discovered even without Birkenfeld's uh, corroborating evidence, so to speak, uh, he was discovering on his own, uh, you know, a couple years before that, obviously you can appreciate that. So, so we're, we're really talking about a military, and, and, and it's important to understand the role of Booz Allen Hamilton, who they are, what the role they play behind the scenes, because they are head up, headed up by uh, Mike McConnell, who we know from Dan Burish, uh, was considered to be MJ1, as a matter of fact. Uh, now, they say there's a changing in the guard that goes on in, within that organization from time to time. Uh, believe it or not, I think that I got a, a notice a while back saying Dan Burish is now MJ1. But but eight years ago, or, or whatever it was, uh, or seven years ago, uh, Dan Burish was telling us that, that Mike McConnell head of Booz Abel Allen Hamilton who is, is, is one of their, their directors in their board of directors I think is, he is the, the head um, or was uh, I don't know if he still is um, he, he was he was MJ1 so he was in charge of MJ12 he was uh, that's how they, they termed him he was also uh, the, the head of uh, the defense intelligence uh, head of our government uh, for quite a few years in there uh, recently, not not long ago. And oh, he's, the, yeah, are you talking about of the Defense Intelligence Agency? Uh, which no, is, I'm talking about the the Director of Intelligence. Sorry, sorry. All right, director. so the the, the 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 DCI, the Director of Central Intelligence. Uh, I guess that's what it is. It's not. Uh, we're not talking about uh, you know the CIA. We're talking about a def- Director of Intelligence. That's what I know the titles. As being a director of intelligence, uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar about, with the with the other part of it. Uh, but at any rate, so you can look it up. Look up um, Mike McConnell, um, and 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 it's all it's even on Wikipedia, you know. Uh, so so th- that's you got to understand who Dove Zakheim was working for. He came out of the military, and these people come out of the military, they're retired, and they go into Booz Allen Hamilton, and then they shore up the machine from there, you know, um, and and this is how you get Blackwater, and this is how you get uh, Halliburton, and the whole, this is what's running, these are the organizations, the companies that are are basically supplying uh, the mercenaries and and the technology from the aerospace community, they're hand in glove with the military, um, and there, so there's a sort of a, a hand, one hot hand washes the other hand sort of re- relationship. And he describes this, uh, Scott Bennett describes this. And what he, he kept stumbling on was, was the fact that things that he found to fix, they didn't want to hear about and they didn't want fixed. And so, so he became known as, as someone who was, who was basically, uh, trying to fix a machine they they wanted to keep broken and this is this is kind of like gets i've always heard about these tanks and you 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 have to really think in your in your brain why would we send tanks that were faulty into a rock where our our soldiers would be killed because the bottoms of the of the tanks were uh were not impervious to explosions and to whatever and i always thought that that was just one indication of like what you call a built-in obsolescence, uh, but this even for human beings, so that these people would be killed, whether they they were you know getting action the way you think of it, you could just go go dry, ri- riding one of these tanks over a landmine and basically take out the whole the whole crew. Well, let, let me let me comment on that because the tank is not the only. Uh, problematic system that we have out there. If you if you look at the F thirty five, which was uh, orig- originally sold as the Joint Strike Fighter, 
and we're going to have these great economies of scale because for once the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, the Marine Corps are all going to have the same platform flying in the sky. There's not going to be F-14s for the Navy and F-16s for the Air Force. It's not going to happen that way this time. But it, it turned out that it, it didn't achieve any of its design goals. It's like 400%, 500% over budget, and they 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 did not uh, standardize. And, and it, 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 it's what uh, Duff and many others call the flying garbage truck. And yet this thing is defended uh, to to the end by uh, guys like John McCain, who just got uh, a wing of F-35s uh, stationed at uh, Luke Air Force Base in, in Phoenix, Arizona. It's, it's just absolutely crazy. And they build this stuff into them on purpose. They don't care about our young men. They care about profits. Uh, you know, I could say the same thing about the M-16 rifle which is woefully inadequate as a combat weapon. Uh, the M14 uh, in the, you know, the 308 caliber, the 7.62 uh, NATO rounds were, were much, much better. And you know, I, could, I could go on about this, but anyway, uh, it's, well, it, 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 you, it, it's part of the psychology of making money. Making money is more important than the lives of our service personnel. That's how these people look at things. Well, it, it, it goes beyond that, I would say, uh, which, you know, and, and absolutely you're very, very correct a, about this type of thing. And we're talking about sending soldiers into battle that are uh, not, not prepared and certainly not supported by their technology uh, the way they could be, except during those, those occasions when they want to try out a new toy. So what you have is they are cannon fodder. And... So on, on one level, it, it's a very interesting dynamic going on because behind the scenes, you see these wars could be won without a, a human uh, entering into battle on, on any level from, from the secret space program, okay, at this point. And, and so they have everything that they need, uh, you know, not even considering, not even counting the super soldiers that they're, 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 they're deploying like on Mars, etc., and I'm going to be doing, an, uh, by the way, I'm going to give myself a plug here because tonight I'm uh, at 7 p.m. I'm going to do a show with uh, a super soldier. His name is Captain K. He came out uh, four or five months ago uh, on, and he's he's going to be talking to me on video. So we're gonna we, we're going to be really getting into it. Um, he's come out under his own name and his own face. He's actually under orders. He says from a commanding general to. Uh, to, dis to disclose. And so he spent uh, 17 years in on Mars, and uh, the last, I think, two, three years he was on, on the moon, uh, actually really in, this, in what we know of as so Solar Warden, for all intents and purposes. Uh, and, and so we're going to be talking about his whole background and, and really getting into that. So don't miss that tonight on, on Camelot live stream. It's on the front page of my website if you want to find the link. And uh, we'll be there tonight at 7 p.m. So, but to get back, so we're going to be talking about the secret space program and what really is going on and where the money is going that is, is being funded by these operations that the Soviets and the U.S., so, you know, uh, Russians, okay, are, um, are hand in hand working on from both sides of the equation. So they're both sending, in, in other words, it's not just, just the United States in this game. In other words, we have other countries that are fully knowledgeable, that are involved in financing the, the secret space program and, and working together on this off planet, on here on this planet, appearing to be our enemies and sending their young men in and, and going through these same, same routines. Now, one of the things that the U.S. does is they put out publicity via their, uh, you know, agents and various other places. Uh, to convince people that we have inadequate uh, equipment, we have inadequate, uh, you know, number of soldiers, we have inadequate this, inter that's on the surface uh, supposed military. But the reality behind the scenes is that we've got technology that is, you know, I'm told 10,000 years in advance of what we know here on surface Earth. So when you wrap your mind around that, and and this is the interesting thing that I find, is that I don't know why this is, <laughs> but I'm the only one out there talking about the secret space program in any depth and really taking what we hear on the surface Earth and absolutely taking every single 
item out there and 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 sending it through and and understanding it in the bigger picture and you know some people like you are are getting on board with it mike um there's a few other people uh the white hats had to come to terms with it when they realized that everything was going to black projects Catherine austin fitz who i interviewed not long ago very much recommend my interview with her there were places she would not go okay because she she wants to stay alive I, I i do understand i mean you know but the bottom line is that she even even agree, agrees with me that for example this whole financial meltdown is an illusion it's it's manufactured it's being manufactured to you know there is a if you read the art of war uh then you understand that one of the most important things you do is you pretend to be much less than you really are and so the United States has is, is taken that on board. Uh, they, they use that every day in, in the publicity and, and so on and so forth. That is why they say they can't handle, wow, they can't handle another war with, a, with Iraq or, a, you know, go into Syria. They just don't have the technology. They don't have the equipment. And then they go in anyway, of course. Uh, but they're ill prepared, supposedly. Then they use these crummy weapons. Uh, they send their young men out there. But you gotta wrap your mind around what are they doing with the young men that they really want to safeguard? The ones they're sending off planet. Those are the creme de la creme. Okay. The ones that are left behind here, cannon fodder. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, this is, this is what's going on here. People need to understand that everything going on off planet is impacting the surface earth in a big way. And that, that includes under, under the earth. Well, under well let me, is, let me give an, an example because it was about five, six years ago where the U.S. announced that they were going to ratchet down from their ability to fight full scale war in two theaters. That they were going to ratchet down to fighting full scale war in one theater and then regional conflicts. Uh, that, that was a major strategic shift in, in what US military policy has been since World War II. So there there is a there, there's documentation on this that that says that they they advertise to the world we don't have the the capabilities we used to have. And uh that they, that that's been, you know, programmed in if you will. Now my other question for you Carrie is what is going on off world? I mean, do we know? Do we you know uh what are these guys doing out there what's what is their what is their mission what are they up to what are they what battles are they fighting if any okay well this this gets into you know <laughs> i mean stay tuned tonight at 7 p.m because you know i let's talk to a guy who was there okay and the indicators are that this guy he's a marine uh he he definitely looks like a marine um and i can tell you that that he was just interviewed by hangar one uh, he flew down to LA just recently. So they're on this story, uh, like white on rice. Uh, basically what I find now, and I, it's actually amusing to me because it used to be, the day used to be when Camelot was, was bringing these people out and everyone else was just, uh, you know, not getting it, so to speak. And now suddenly shows, TV shows like Hangar One are trying to nab these people the minute they get out the gate. Um, and for their shows. Of course, they, you know, at the moment, they don't touch me, but they did use my Gary McKinnon footage. But, you know, I'm too dangerous. I, mean, I can't be, you know, I'll, I'm a wild card. So, so Yes, you, know, you are. You're about as wild <laughs> as they get, I think. <laughs> All right. But, but the bottom line is that if you, you can, you can see where this is going. So, so they'll take one of these witnesses. So he was out here being filmed and wined and dined by Hangar One. And so his, his saga will be out there. But believe me, when I do an interview with somebody, <laughs> uh, we're going to go places they never dreamed of. So uh, for what it's worth, um, that's what happens with me. Uh, you know, just because I've had my eye on this ball now for over eight years and um, around the clock. And and so, you know, these things, uh, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing when you are um, going down the rabbit hole on a daily basis and you are always... Um, sort of getting several steps up in, you know, in front of most of, uh, most of the people around you. They just, you know, they just, most people just aren't, aren't stepping up. Um, now I'm more and more, we have, all the Camelot audience has been with me all through it. There are some real diehards out there and, and kudos to them. Uh, people like 
as well as you, uh, Mike Harris. And, uh, you know, there's some, some real astute people out there. So let me, let me be clear about that. Um, I've been bringing, uh, Jimmy Church up to <laughs> speed. Uh, I'm going to give him some, some kudos here, but, you know, uh, there's, you know, this kind of thing going on. So, so, okay, to get back to Scott Bennett. So, I just want to say that that this man is what's interesting is we spent I don't know it was like two hours straight talk he was talking about his story and or more than that and and boy he does not stop I mean talk about someone wrote to me stamina that's right this guy has incredible stamina he's like a bulldog he gets his something in his in his mouth and he just he would not let go. And, and they really knew that. They, they knew that they, they basically had, um, had, had created a, a monster in their own midst. And then, then they had to take him out. They had to get him out. And so they did. But interestingly enough, if you look at his trajectory, and even he had, he would say this now, he has had a journey of awakening from being just a diehard kind of, uh, a soldier who, who believed in, in his, on a certain level, swallowed the Kool-Aid, as I say, uh, bought into the whole terrorism, you know, nonsense. Um, but then went down a road to psychoanalyze that whole sort of uh, is Islamic contingent, which is important. Um, I mean, there is a there is a, a programming, you know, we don't just program our people. The Islam programs their people, you know, Buddhism programs theirs, uh, the Vatican programs theirs, uh, you know, and so it goes. So it's important to get into the minds of these people that you're supposedly going to mess with, even if they're an enemy you want to keep alive so you can keep fighting them another day, which is in essence what's happening. You're funding them. They are funding them. They are creating them. They are training them. Uh, they are bringing them over to Saudi Arabia. They're training these guys. And then they're like, do you really seriously think, I mean, if I was a young Islamic guy and I believed in Allah and all this kind of nonsense, then the bottom line would be that somebody offers me a gun and, and look, I'm unemployed. I'm lounging on the streets of, of Egypt. I'm smoking. I'm drinking. I've got nothing else to do. And someone says, come over here, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm young. I'm athletic. Uh, hell, I'll take a gun. You know, why not? Uh, take, take some lessons, uh, get, get, you know, uh, learn some stuff in a military unit. And they don't know what's, what I'm going to do with it, uh, five years from now, two years from now, you know, even when I get out. You know, uh, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, you know, come on, is our military really that short-sighted? You have to say to yourself, to train these people that are going to turn against them the minute they walk out the gate, come on, they know that. Well, that, that that's, that's part of the process. That's been what the School of the Americas at Fort Benning has been doing. MS-13 is a creation of Fort Benning School of the Americas. That's whatever we were engaged in uh, the uh, the uh, Sandinista Contra conflict. We trained the Contras at Fort Benning from El Salvador. That's who is MS-13. That that is who is bringing the drugs in. That is, we we already have an occupation army inside the U.S. via these criminal gangs. The, the, the U.S. government knew what they were doing, you know, 30 years ago, and that was going on. That this is this has been their mo for a very very long time. They they the, the military cannot exist without a clear and present danger to the nation. And uh, that's why they keep creating new ones. There you go. I mean, that, that you know, that encapsulates it in, in one sentence. Uh, <laughs> you know, need we say more? I mean, that's the reality. So this is what Scott Bennett is, is exposing. He's exposing a lot of things, though. He also exposed the back room way that, that again, these justice is washing the hands and and filling the pockets of of you know of certain elements of the military how these these uh so-called companies that they retire to uh that the senators and and even congressmen but especially military ex-military go into um like Booz Allen Hamilton that are running the show behind the scenes that are gatekeepers basically for where this stuff goes and where where it gets out and where it doesn't and um and and so whether he knows it or not I, I and he's a smart guy I guess he does uh his story operates on more than one level swiss bank accounts 
uh, funding terrorism and being facilitated hand in glove with uh, the CIA uh, is only the, the edge of the iceberg, really, in terms of the levels at which the story and the things he's revealing. See, people don't realize is that they think I'm into this story. To be honest, I de- I dealt with him and came and and I'm going to tell people how I, how he got to me because I didn't get a chance to do that on the air the other day. Um, basically, I know there's a bigger story here, and he has acknowledged this to me behind the scenes. You see, he isn't releasing all his whole hand, if you will. Uh, there's a much bigger story here, and he's got more. Uh, more to release, okay? Um, and this is probably what he's not saying is much more dangerous probably to the powers that be than what he is saying. Um, now, at some point, he may start saying that stuff, and I'm going to be on board for that. Well, can um, you speculate as to what that might be? Well, before I go there, let me tell you how he found me. It's kind of, it's kind of a fun story. He said, he said he, he had tried every journalist and in my, in my, uh, interview with him, you'll hear, I mean, he, he, he papered the Congress, he papered, I mean, he really went out there in a big way because again, he had an advertising background. He knew to reach the journalists, to reach the major players, the Greenwalds, the whoever they're out there, you know. So he, he notified all of them as, as to his story and they all ignored him. And nobody had the courage to co- to come on board, even the so-called, you know, uh, semi-sympathetic journal- journalists to to this. And they all that were scared for their lives, so they wouldn't touch it. And and someone said to him, uh, actually told him about me. They said there's only one investigative journalist who has the, <laughs> I don't know, the chutzpah to to actually deal with this. A- and it was me. He didn't know Camelot. He didn't know me. Well, well, hold that thought. We'll be right back after this short break, and uh, we'll we'll finish up this story. I want to find out how we, the rest of the story right after this. Be right back. You're listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Good afternoon. Welcome back. This is Mike Harris on Revolution Radio. Today is Friday, October 3rd, 2014. My guest today from Project Camelot is Carrie Cassidy. Carrie, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. So where were we? You were, you're telling us about how you met, uh, Scott. Oh, right. Okay. So, so the bottom line is no one else, uh, would, would, would release this story. Uh, th- they said I was, fearless thank you for whoever that was that was a nice compliment i'm not sure i'm completely fearless uh, you know i think having fear means you're slightly intelligent <laughs> uh there are things to be feared out there but uh the bottom line is having courage to fight them anyway <laughs> Maybe yeah, that, 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 that's really the issue i mean if you weren't afraid it requires no courage it's whatever you are afraid and you have to do the right thing anyway that's where the courage comes in yeah and, uh, and, and knowing the choice we have and why it's so important. Uh, bottom line is, is, is that's what he was told. Uh, he contacted me very tentatively, uh, didn't know a thing about Camelot and wrote me one email. Um, of course I responded right away and the rest is, as they say, is history. However, uh, you know, it is interesting because, uh, we, we did an interesting campaign the other day, um, after the show. Uh, knowing that, see, there's, you're, you know, we have safety in numbers. That's the bottom line. Okay. So, uh, and Camelot has always operated on that, on that premise that, uh, the best, you know, the best place to hide is out in the open is one of our, our mottos and our sayings. So, um, what happened is I created an email and I sent it out to every journalist that I am in touch with in a direct way. Um, and that email basically, I think I sent one to you, Mike. Uh, what happens is it talks about the show. It talks about who he is. And it basically lets people know that no other journalist has had the, you know, let me just say the balls to, to deal with this man, to, to get his story out. And, um, and I'm basically throwing that in everyone's face out there. So I sent it out to, to all the journalists that I'm in contact with, which is a fair number, but they're mainly alternative journalists, I have to say, um, with maybe one or two exceptions. Uh, and I also asked him, I forwarded the email to him, 
And I said, send this out to all of your journalist contacts, meaning everyone in the mainstream that he initially sent his, his story to, to basically throw this in the, in their face and say, okay, now this is out there. Okay. Now the, the gate has been broken. Um, the dam has been broken. This is now out there. Now what happened was the night I had advertised, uh, the, the show and the night before I was due to do it, do an interview with him. Uh, he got a call l- late that, right in that evening, uh, say, from Russia Today, from a, a journalist at Russia Today, who obviously they're paying attention to my site, to what I'm doing, uh, dogging my heels, as I call it, which is the same thing that the Gordon Duff and Veterans Today do, uh, with all due respect. <laughs> and, uh, basically, uh, <laughs> they, they saw that I was going to have this guy on. Uh, they, 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 they said, could, could he call them and do an interview right away with them? So they tried to do what's called in the, in this trade, scoop me. Um, the guy was honorable. He, he basically told me about it. He asked my, my advice. And, you know, I just said, you know, look, uh, this is, uh, with all due respect to Russia today, they do have a, a certain orientation, um, that I said, you know, it's best to get it out straight. I'm not going to just give you a sound bite. I'm going to give you the real thing. So, so we, we went on the air and he didn't do that interview beforehand. I don't know if he's gone back to them and been able to, to go on Russia today yet. I don't know, but that, that tells you what's going on out there. Um, I have, I have encouraged other journalists such as yourself to have him on. I think you're going to have him on. Well, yeah, um, I, I got his contact information from you yesterday and I will reach out to him and invite him on. Great. Because, you know, at this point, this isn't about ego. It's about their safety in numbers. And the sooner that other journalists start picking up this story and running with it now, because they were too afraid before, uh, assuming that having one journalist take the hit uh, in the beginning, which is me, um, and having the hutzpahed to do that, uh, the story is now out there. It's going viral um, you know, the word got around it, it, you know, we had a huge audience. It's, it's basically, uh, now it's hit the ground running, so to speak, which is what happens with people that I, I break into the, into the consciousness of the, of the masses, so to speak. Um, that's what we do. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, this story is now going to go viral and, uh, I hope it doesn't die. I have to say that I've been given leads to try to contact Birkenfeld, for example. But, uh, you know, being paid $104 million to be quiet, um, I don't know if he'll, if he'll feel he can come forward, uh, after this time. Well, let me, let me, let me comment on that because what the cartels do, and I've had them do this to friends of mine who are now dead. And they, they say, look, we can give you silver or we can give you lead. And they mean it. You know, I, I lost a, a couple friends over the past couple years, you know, uh, to that exact thing. And these are guys who would not compromise with the cartels, and they took them out, you know. Yeah. Just, just, just how it works. Yeah. And, it's and, true. and Well, you stood up to them, Mike. I mean, you're here today because you stood up to these guys when you ran for governor. Oh yeah, I did. I, I had a lot of pressure on me to to back out, you know, to to, to fold my tent and drop you know, out of the race. And you know, it, it wasn't no; it was it was hell no. And the more they leaned on me, the more determined I get. I, I guess I have a personality defect that way. <laughs> but uh, but you know, whatever whatever someone tells me to, oh, it's for your own good. You should drop out. So what do you mean it's for my own good? There is no own good. Why do you want me out? It really makes me dig my heels in and. Uh, you know, I, I like the quote that your guy Scott Bennett made that I fear no man. And I don't fear any man either. Come on, bring it on, buddy. What do you got? You know, come on, tough guy, show me. Right. Uh, it's, uh, I, I got a little bit of that in me too. I hate to say it. Well, yeah. And, and, and obviously I do too. Or some people would say a death wish. wish. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been told the same thing. No, I mean, you know, it's just, there are some of us. I mean, obviously Scott uh, Bennett is one of them. Uh, you know, you tell him not to do this and he, he's gonna, he's gonna go straight for it, for it. Uh, I've been like that since I was a kid. Um, <laughs> I am not gonna change now. Um, so, so it's, it's just the way it is. And think, I call it the rebel gene. Uh, it's indispensable. And you, if you don't have it, you better develop it, uh, cause you're gonna need it as, in the days coming forward. Um, you know, look, 
if it's if we don't fight the good fight then then how can we expect the people coming be after us to do that you know what i'm saying so um so it's all about saving the planet it's all about saving humanity and um and that this is where what it's really all about so they're fighting a dirty game you know um that's the bottom line and and this guy was was served it on a platter and interestingly he has some white hats guarding him because that's how he ended up connecting with the very guy who could substantiate his 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 theories and at everything he'd investigated so from in the military the guy in the banking industry you know world Swiss banking uh basically complimented him perfectly to a T and so they they sat in prison uh for the duration and and they just compared notes on a daily basis and really ran this thing down um now there's an interesting thing going on with this because people will say you know have i had any you know blowback or whatever and i have to say that first of all the story is getting out there so that's its own defense but the other side of that is that uh the the bank accounts themselves with Birkenfeld being being shut up um without him going on the stand and going public um you you don't have the substantiation that that Scott Bennett really needs to to put a dent in in the powers that be um in a substantial way you need you actually need that for this story and he he said something on the air with me uh which is to do with the fact that at this point uh we're talking at least 2 years after the fact and with ISIS now uh you know raging and they're they're all uh, you know equipped and and funded and, and so on um and and ISIL and the so-called Islamic state what the hell is that i i mean that's just like the sickest all of a sudden they use these words Islamic state well what where, where is that which 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 country are we talking about there um but at any rate um <laughs> uh you know the bottom line but, but, is... You're, you're, you're right, but you just touched on a, on a good point, and that is they use the language to shape our thoughts. And it, it's all part of the, the mind control issue that goes on in this country. And, you know, I, I've had a million and five people ask me, why don't people wake up? And I'll tell you why they don't wake up. It's because they watch TV. TV is, is the greatest educational tool ever invented. And we're, they use it to educate us in the wrong things. And to have the wrong beliefs, to have the wrong perceptions, to have the wrong thoughts. And it's, it's just foolish. So folks, turn off your TV as quick as you can. Get on the internet instead. You know, you talk to people like Carrie. Listen to people out there who will tell you the truth or, or at least will tell you the truth as, as, as much as we know of it now because the truth is constantly growing. It's constantly developing. And it's, it's something you're not going to get on mainstream ever. Fair enough. Although, uh, you know, I'm always a, a proponent in studying the tactics of, of, of the minds of the people that want to program me, uh, so that I, I, I kind of get, uh, a, an, an insight into what they're planning. But, you know, everyone has to go at this their own way. I can say that I don't own a TV. So if I watch something, I see it on my, on my computer, first of all. So I choose when, I choose how, <laughs> like Julia Roberts, uh, in Pretty Woman. Uh, yeah, it, you, know, uh, well, you kind of remind me of her, actually, in a different way. <laughs> so I'll take that as a compliment. Um, the thing is that the, I was, I was just, I didn't f- quite finish my thought when I was talking before because I wanted to say that the bottom line is that he acknowledged that the Swiss accounts that even Birkenfeld has will now have been changed, modified, um, maybe even closed, uh, and new ones will have been created. You know, in the time between he, that he went, he was put in prison, and he has a list. You can appreciate that. The next thing they do is they go cover dr- their tracks, so that if it ever does get out, uh, because Scott, for example, uh, Bennett has that list. Um, you know that that their, their tracks are covered. Uh, this is inevitable. This is how the financial world works. So, so th- you know, it's highly likely that at this time. They have covered some of those tracks uh, to some degree. 
uh, even with their well, flagrant it, arrogance. It, it, that, 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 that's a given. You know, these guys, if they're not switching their bank accounts on a random basis anyway, just changing the numbers, moving the money from one account to the, to the other, then they're remiss in their, their duties. It, it would be like, um, you know, if you're in a wartime situation, which we are in war with these people, uh, if you didn't change your communication frequencies on your radios on an intermittent basis to something that, uh, you know, that's already predetermined, then, then you're foolish for not doing that. It's the same type of thing. There you go. And and uh, it, so what I say to people and what I would say is that uh, it's important to take from the story the understanding that this is a principled man, that he obviously is going to go down fighting, that he's not going to let go of the story. He's he's going to, you know, he's basically going to push the envelope in every way. Um, it's important to take these whistleblowers and understand them as human beings and realize that they're telling the truth. Um, this is going to sound like a weird segue, but uh, I just Richard Allen Miller, he, he he wrote me an email that was sort of heartbreaking this morning. He said, you know, uh, they took down the book selling website uh, that he was trying to sell books through uh, as a, as by virtue of being on my show. We, we we spend some time explaining people how you if you're interested in his books, where you go to purchase them, because the the night uh, he was on Jimmy Church's show. Uh, he had zero sales, and normally, if he's on my show or he's on Coast to Coast or wherever it is, he has a minimum 400 books sell. Um, and so something weird is going on. Uh, he's concerned because this is how he makes his living. This is how he's staying alive. And so I wrote to him that this morning I took the show that was on live stream with a, a limited live audience last night. It went on to YouTube very early this morning. And uh, it's already got over a thousand hits, uh, over a thousand people watching it, which means an, a thousand potential people are going to be sitting and learning how to uh, how to purchase a book from him. So it's important to, for him to understand that this thing is going to stay on YouTube. That there are going to be people watching and listening. They're going to hear this show. They're maybe going to going to be interested to to listen to that show uh and learn something because Richard Allen Miller is absolutely hands down brilliant and and we talk about some very interesting things about the occult and uh the new weapons out there and what's really going on um and boy do we cover a lot of ground uh so you know the thing is well that, let's, let's uh, talk about about Rick Miller too because he's he's had a series of things happen to him um, yes. You know, there was an incident where I, I went over to his house to visit him. And he had a black eye, and I said, "What happened?" And he got somebody punched him. Uh, some some random guy punched him, and uh, his his website was taken down. Someone entered his home to, to do it because they were so thorough with it. Uh, he's had a a number of um, very strange incidences, and, and he thinks it's because. Uh, he's close to, uh, or he's disclosing material that is yet to be patented, and it's uh, the, the patenter, uh, some corporation, might be doing this. That's speculation on his part. And, and Rick Miller is a kind and gentle soul. There's, there's not a nicer guy out there. Uh, and so, folks, if you can support him, go, go to his website. It's Oak Publishing, um, and you know he, he sells a ton of books. You know that that's how you can support him. You know, you know he's got so many interesting topics. Buy a couple and and help him stay alive. Because when his website went down, he didn't know how he was going to make September or October's rent. I have to be honest with you; he did not know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the bottom line. These people, uh, you know, it's true of most of us out there. We're, we're living very close to, uh, to the bottom line. And if, so if somebody hits us there, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very, very difficult. And, and Rick is, like you say, he's, you know, he's a really, he's just, he'll share everything. He's very open hearted kind of guy. Um, and on, on top of being brilliant, you usually don't get that combination. Uh, but it happens to be the case. Um, and, and so, yeah, if people can support him, that would be awesome. And, uh, go to my website. Um, I'm going to be posting the, it, it's still on live stream and it never comes down from live stream either. So you can go and live stream the Camelot live stream and watch it. But, uh, you can also watch it on YouTube, uh, where it's a, it helps us to track the hits and all of that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, this is, this is what's going on. So people, it's not just him. Uh, by the way, he had his computers completely wiped, uh, and he lost 10 books 
that he had on his computers. He had to reconstitute them from various other places. Uh, apparently, he's done that for, um, he said, nine of them, the tenth one he's working on. Um, the guy is prolific. He's a prolific writer. He, you know, he's trying to get all of his information into books. Um, it's worth it. I mean, what the guy is, is, is awesome. Uh, so, and, you know, he will continue to be out there talking and so on, but you can't possibly get everything from one show with <laughs> Rick Miller. Uh, you, you gotta have the guy back, you know, countless number of times because he's got so much going on. And he, you know, he, it's true. He, he's, uh, there is a war. L- let me just say this. There is a war. And this is why Scott Bennett was able to connect with a guy who fortuitously had all the evidence that, that backed everything Scott had found, even though he, they were both in jail. Um, that doesn't happen by accident. Look, there is someone behind the scenes watching out for the people like us and they are working from the inside and they are called, we call them white hats for lack of a better term. And, uh, and it's just important to know that they're, they're back there. They are facilitating us staying alive. They're facilitating getting the truth out. They are at odds with the powers that be. They want us to know. They believe humans have a right to know and they're doing it in a certain way. They're not revealing who they are. Um, they're staying hidden and working uh, in in the shadows, so to speak. So um, kudos to those people. And, uh, and, 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 you know, the writers and veterans today are among them. Uh, you know, even though they're putting out some disinfo with what they do, uh, that's part of the game. It's really a trade-off. Uh, you know, when you're a whistleblower of any kind, uh, oftentimes, even, even when you're pushing the envelope and you're allowed to say whatever you're allowed to say, you're supposed to throw some disinfo in with it. Uh, and, and that basically keeps you safe. Um, and, and then the people that are discerning will be able to tell the difference. And that's, you know, it's not about, and I say this often, but it's not about us getting truth on a silver platter. Uh, it's, it's for us to determine. And it's to, uh, basically, uh, discriminate truth from falsity. That's part of getting that muscle called the brain really working. <laughs> and, so, uh, and it is, it, and it's a hard thing. And I'll go back to my earlier comment. And the reason that so many people don't wake up is because they allow the TV set to dictate to them how they think. And in, until you shake that bad habit of the TV, um, you know, don't expect people to wake up. It, it really is a, uh, it, it's, it has deadly consequences. On the other hand, it has such potential to be really such a, a wonderful tool for, for educating all of humanity. But it, it's used by, uh, by people with bad intentions, uh, you know, to, to, to sell products and to keep people sitting on the sofa yeah. doing nothing. Well, the bottom line is, is keep your eye on sci-fi. Uh, that, that's my, my uh sort of motto in in terms of television and uh like i was saying there the other day there is this uh, show called under the dome that's produced by spielberg i also keep an eye on who's producing these shows because certain certain people have uh hands down insider uh access and mark richards uh, captain mark richards secret space program who i've interviewed twice and if you haven't seen both those interviews you're uh missing a huge amount um Bottom line, he says that Hollywood is fully read in and uh, at least on certain levels. And there's no doubt about it. Uh, there are shows that are, that are putting out information about what they're going to do, um, about their tactics, about their, uh, their approach, uh, and about the players themselves. So it, it can be very revealing. Um, you have to set, but you have to really be a discerning watcher though. You, you have to, so Under the Dome is one such show. They are, they are doing a number of things with that show. Uh, believe me. And they are also, um, they're, they're using the last minutes. Uh, if you're familiar with that sci-fi, uh, sort of revelation of a, of a show. Uh, there was, uh, they're also using the chemtrails, the idea that there's a dome, an impenetrable dome over some of this country, uh, created, uh, and this has to do with, uh, a possible future event that they're gonna keep some of the population al- alive through. Um, it, that's my theory. 
uh, and 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 so it goes. So so there well, are. Well, let, 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 let me ask you a question because I'm going to cross over from sci-fi into reality here. What is your opinion of Dick Cheney coming out in three or four times now? He said, "Expect another 9/11 style nuclear event." <laughs> what, what, what was your what was your what, what's your what's your thoughts on that? I mean, you know, I mean, h- how much are they spoon feeding us? How much are they preconditioning us to accept a nuclear event as being uh, done by ISIS when we know ISIS is a CIA, Mossad, and Saudi uh, uh, construct? Yeah, guys with box cutters again, please. Uh, okay, well, yeah, that that's you know, obviously that's advertisement. Uh, that's that's what we call foreshadowing in in the movie industry. <laughs> He, he's basically setting the stage. That's what he's doing. Um, and, and, you know, this is a magical act. This is why Richard Allen Miller, by the way, is, is so, so valuable as well. He understands, uh, because he stu- he's a magus and he studied, uh, magic in depth. Uh, so he, he really knows how they think. Um, although he doesn't often reveal it very easily. So you, you really have to sort of tie him down to a, to a, you know, and, and, and get him to, to talk about it. But, the bottom line is that that's what they're doing. They're they're putting the idea in your mind. They're hoping that it'll it'll brew there. That there will be a. Um, it's kind of like tilling the soil. It's kind of like preparing the soil for the seed, so to speak. Um, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Sh- look, it, I mean, they've been doing this uh, even on Veterans Today, talking about this mini nukes, uh, and and then Richard Al Miller comes forward and says, well, what they really are are what he calls fluorine, fluorines. We, well, we full, 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 fullerene, fullerene fusion device. Yes. Yes, um, and that basically they're kind of like neutron bombs. They're like clean, clean neutron nukes uh, that that don't leave an after uh, taste and and so on. Uh, you know, there's they're also small. They can be a lot smaller than they will tell you. They're, they're, they're about the size of a Coke can is how small they can get. They can get them as small as a golf ball is what I've been told. Yeah, but uh, the ones I'm, I'm most familiar with are about the size of a can of Coke. Yeah. And, and again, it's not going to be your, your, your Arab, so-called Arab uh, terrorist down the street who's going to learn how to do that uh, you know, or even have that access unless they give it to him. And, and there's another side to this because uh, Scott also talked about uh, it, it, what happens is after you go to prison, these prisoners that are now being released from prison go into what's called a halfway house. And they do that for, I think, around six months or something like that. And uh, then they, I guess, find their own apartments or whatever it is, and they still have parole and all, all that, or whatever it is. But he said they're, they're giving them classes on, on how the CIA and the Mossad uh, assassinate people and have been doing that for the last... 40 years, especially in South America. And he said he found that to be somewhat incongruous with uh, <laughs> the mission again. See, we you would know, think with their goal of rehabilitating them and helping them uh, integrate <laughs> back into society. And yeah, I would say so. Programming them to become basically uh, Manchurian candidates, planting in their minds. And, and it's, it's, it's a, well, I said it's, it's out now recruitment. You know, come out of prison, yeah. you got better to do. I come and assassin you. Here, your skills. Well, well, Carrie, we've got another break coming up, so stick with us, folks. We'll be right back in a couple minutes. More with Carrie Cassidy. Stick with us. You're listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, 100% listener supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Good afternoon. Welcome back. This is Mike Harris on Revolution Radio. Today is Friday, October 3rd, 2014. My guest today is Carrie Cassidy. And once again, I have to come out and say that Revolution Radio is listener supported. So please go to www.freedomslips.com. Find the donate button. Uh, you know, two bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, a hundred bucks. You guys know what your, uh, what your spending limits are. I don't. Whatever you can afford to give, help keep us on the air so we and keep having high quality guests like this. And Carrie, welcome back. Hi there, thanks. And uh, too, while we're at it, why don't we give out your site too? Because you know you live by the same way. You know you're 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 uh, you know listener supported as well. What what's your site? How do they hit the donate button on your site? Well, it should be on the front page. Actually, it's on the front menu as well as the right hand side of the page. Uh, if you scroll down, I believe. But at any rate, it's uh, projectcamelot.org or projectcamelot. Portal.com. They both go the same place. 
Okay, well, we, we have to get that out there because, you know, uh, Thank you. You, you can't live in this world without money. And uh, I want to be very clear that you know, when I ask for donations for the, the station here, it's for the station. It's not for me. I don't make a dime doing this. I never have. I don't know how. I, I haven't figured out how to monetize this thing yet. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, but it, it, it allows me the freedom to say what I want to say and, and not worry about offending some sponsor or something. And so uh, there, there, there's, a, there's a positive to it. So, you know, that, that's the positive. The, the negative to it is that I live pretty close to the bone, just like uh, Richard Allen Miller and you and, and everybody else who's involved in this truth movement here. Absolutely. But anyway, I, I want to get uh, something else out of you. I, I want your opinion on this Ebola thing that's going on, primarily in Africa and now in the U.S. What's, what's your take on this? Oh, God. Uh You know, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know well because cause I, I, want to, I want to remind you of something. Yep. And if you, you remember about, it's been almost a year now, that uh, we had a, a discussion where Africa was going to be depopulated to make room for an off-world population uh, yes. that was going to be coming here. And so I, I just wanted to, to get your uh, your input on this to see, uh, do you see any connection? Uh, is there, uh, is this just a, a coincidence or is this uh, something, you know, more? Uh, well, no coincidence there. Uh, yeah, you know, AIDS didn't work. Uh, so they, they've got this new bioweapon called, uh, Ebola, uh, and, and there's substantial evidence that it's, it's been messed with. Uh, it, it story is crazy. Uh, you know, I don't have a whistleblower in this regard, but I can tell just from having gathered, you know, read the various news reports and so on. Um, now this thing is supposedly, they've got some people, I don't know if it's true, that was sent to me. Uh, that, that are basically turning into zombies. In other words, they die, they come back to life, and they're like zombies. Uh, so we're really talking about, you know, I mean, we know the movie Zombie. Uh, there's been so many zombie movies, but, the, you know, the more recent one. Um, this kind of outbreak was is basically uh, inevitable because they want to, to create these kinds of situations uh, where humans can be viewed as, well, as I've called them and the way they want to treat them, uh, you could call them collateral damage. I was, I was calling them, you know, cannon fodder, uh, fodder for cannons. So again, you've got an, an internal, uh, army, uh, various, even they, they've even, uh, and, and David Icke goes into this, uh, he, he was kind of first on first base with talking about how even your local postman has now been, been trained to supposedly, uh, hold a gun on you and, uh, and so on. So, so we're really giving them uh, an opportunity to put uh, what do you call um, uh, you know that kind of um, oh god uh, you know where they lock everything down at night um, <laughs> uh, curfew yeah a curfew but but more yeah. than that um, you martial know, law be, what? yeah I mean we're, we're talking about martial law I mean that's what what they're probably working on. Uh, it, it's very interesting. I, I know that uh, one of the whistleblowers that I interviewed, um, a, a so super soldier, a James Casbolt, who has has you know calling himself Michael Prince and and so on, who got went off the rails in a big way. But that's a very important interview. In that interview, uh, he actually said, "Well, the next thing they're working on is a race war." <laughs> And at the time, I just laughed at him. I said, you know, you're kidding me. This is like so old school. Um, you can't believe that this, this card isn't going to work here. And, and, you know, we know about, uh, what went on in, in um, uh, what was the town? Fredericksburg or whatever? Fer Ferguson. Ferguson. Okay. Yeah. Fer Ferguson, Missouri. And, you know, believe it or not, that's, that's near where I grew up. I mean, that used to be an all white neighborhood and, uh, now it's all black. Yeah, well, uh, regardless of, of the color of the people that live there, you know, which is like, who cares? Uh, but, but what I they, say is we're all Americans. Don't forget it. Absolutely. But but the bottom line is, you know, Africa is being messed with so completely. And uh, and there is a side to this in which they're, they're putting in, in, uh, in these kinds of uh, – Ways of, of, of organizing and controlling the public. They're always trying to squeeze this thing a little tighter because consciousness is rising so fast. Uh, they're scared. I mean, this is, has got to be telling you how frickin' scared they are of us and, uh, and that they have to come up with something. They have to go to the nth degree. And, and you can appreciate that this whole sort of Ebola type of thing, this zombie type of thing, 
is is really the beginning of the end in terms of their grab bag of tricks. They can't possibly have anything further in there uh, to roll out uh, to give them more control, reasons for control, to have you hand over more rights than you already have, and certainly to vaccinate you. And and then they've got complete control because once they vaccinate you, boy, oh, boy. I mean, they've already – I mean, it's, it's kind of funny that they even want to try to do that because with the chemtrails and with, with what is in the chemtrails and we've got – evidence across the board, and Richard Allen Miller is also right on this geoengineering uh, thing. The bottom line is the nano and chemtrails. They don't need to take a needle and shoot you up with something. They're doing it every day in your skies, but it apparently uh, it's not enough. It's not working. It must not be working. They it's must not, need not, to... working, not working fast enough, let's just say that. Yeah. Okay, so so this is what I think about Ebola. I, this is what I think. It's just another one of their bullshit, you know, things going on. And, you know, get over it already. I mean, human beings just do not have to be going down this road. This is like so just, I mean, it's old school. It's it's worse than old school, but it's it's just crazy, you know. Um, why they have to want uh, to, to go in these directions in order to keep control um, it just tells it smacks of a desperate uh desperate population that uh that you know they they really are i mean they're just the greed in the uh, the satanism is just uh blinded them they have no sense of 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 balance at any at any rate um what's really happening oh. is it may it may be coming to a kind of an end game when some kind of thing like this is let to get leashed unleashed but um I, I don't. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think it'll be successful. I mean, that's that's just my point of view. I mean, it's interesting. Whitley Strieber wrote a book, uh, and it, it was called The Grays. I think it's called The Grays. Um, it was uh, rather fortuitous. It was talking about towns in which uh, you know people were turned into zombies, and that there were these TR three Bs that were being flown and uh, and orchestrating the whole the whole so-called war that was going on then and um it's it's worth reading it's 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 kind of a terrifying read um it's a little too close to to reality uh but this is kind of the pro they're working on a program you know like a scenario and you need to kind of like follow it and and begin to jump ahead of them so that you're not kind of caught unawares um i can say that mms will get rid of if you do get shot up with some kind of vaccine, if you're stupid enough to be vaccinated, if they make it, you know, I mean, I'll leave the country if they make it that you have to legally have something because I don't tolerate this kind of stuff. But bottom line is, if you need, if you do get a vaccine, you don't want it. Uh, MMS is said to clear the shit out. So, uh, so yeah, MMS, uh, Mies- okay, what, what's uh, what, what's MMS? What are we talking about? Here? MMS. It's uh, we've got several interviews on our website with a guy named Jim Humble. He he was in Africa curing, uh, well, curing AIDS, curing malaria. Uh, bottom line, they had all kinds of trials. Uh, they tried to kill him. They tried to shut him down. Uh, we've interviewed him a number of times. There are a number of people that sell MMS. There's an ad on the front page. Of okay, right, so so this is a this is a supplement type product or something. Yeah, it's a it, you know it's 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 basically um, you know God I'm I'm not a scientist but it's. It's, uh, what do they call that? Oh, uh, God. Chlorine and something. It's some kind of molecules, you know. It's very simple. It costs like, you know, you can get a lifetime supply for $20, basically. You use a couple drops in water. I know there are people that take MMS nowadays every day. I don't think that's Okay, helpful. chloride, chlorine dioxide. There you go. Yeah. But the thing is that it, it, you know, it, there is, it is for sale. There are people who are, uh, it's, it's being done differently now than it was originally. Um, by the way, you can, you can get it so that it is, um, it's put into water through some kind of osmosis process, um, and oxygenation process. And that takes away the dreadful taste and also, uh, some of the more, kind of potent side effects or whatever you want to call that. Um, you know, there are people out there that say, like uh, Bill, Dr. Bill Digo says, you know, it's really a, a last resort. But, hey, if you get vaccinated and you want to get that stuff out of you, which you should do, um, then, look, MMS is the thing. 
So um, that's what I would say. That's my personal opinion. Okay, so I'm not medical doctor. I don't know. You know, I don't go to doctors. <laughs> so let me say that. So if you know, you might find me questionable on that level. Um, I appreciate the medical fe- profession does have some intelligent people working in it, but by and large, I think that they, the whole thing is a plot, a government plot. Along with healthcare, and um, and the last thing you should do is have another human taking care of your health, uh, it, you know, unless you trust them implicitly, and uh, and they're a true healer in the true sense of the esoteric meaning of that word, and uh, so that's my opinion on that. But anyway, so you're asking me about Ebola? At that I see it as a government plot, massive, a, a new world order plot in the most massive way, and that seems like a no brainer to me. I don't think that takes. Uh, even half a brain to figure it out. Well, I just don't want to jump to any conclusions on this. I'm trying to remain, you know, healthily skeptical of, of everything, and I just just wanted your opinion on it. I have I've had another guest come on and say that it's you know the U.S. introduced it. Uh, in Africa because they wanted to open up uh, an AFRICOM base over there. They've not been able to open one. No country will allow them in. And now Liberia has invited 3,000 U.S. troops in. 3,000 <laughs> troops will grow to 5,000 troops. 5,000 will be 10,000. And the next thing you know, we've got you know 200,000 uh, you know uh, military personnel over there. It's just uh, you know, one right. of those those things. And I, then we can I, have I, another, uh, you know then we can have another Benghazi uh, and 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 so it goes. I mean. You know, this is, this is just, you know, this is the game being played on planet Earth right now. It's just, uh, it's incredible. It's massive. It's in your face. Um, and it's unrelenting. So, uh, so what you need to do is equip yourself. You need to realize that, you know, you are picking sides just by being alive and, um, and your choices are there. Uh, you know, you need to protect yourselves, your families and understand that your government is out to get you. Uh, first, okay. First, so, so how how would you advise people to protect themselves and their families? What what proactive things can people do to prepare? Well, I mean, I would say watch my video interview with Matt Stein because I am not, a, you know, a prepper, uh, and I have a different mission, if you will. Uh, that isn't to say that I won't go to the store and get 10 cans of uh, of, of black beans. Black beans happen to be uh, <laughs> very cheap. Very healthy way to stay alive, uh, but uh, but that's probably the extent of my prepping. Now, really, I'm the worst person to ask that question of. But I can say that on the if on the material plane. Now, if you want to talk about you know activating your kundalini and becoming uh, you know being learning how to go interdimensional and and shoring up your uh, your DNA and act, reactivating it uh, a la Lucy, then uh, yeah, I'm the person to talk to. <laughs> Well, let, let, let's talk about Lucy. That was uh, an incredible movie where a woman who, you know, the average human, they say only use 10% of her brain. She gets to have full functionality out of hers through an inadvertent drug overdose as she was being used as a mule to smuggle uh, contraband. And uh, she she can actually rewrite the space-time continuum, it seems. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, these are the powers that we're, we are actually going to have in hand as time moves on. In fact, we're already, you know, we are already very close to these, these abilities. Some of us more so than others, needless to say. But, you know, when you see happening in front of you something that you have uh, planned for, wishes coming true, dreams coming true, however you want to term that, that's, that's a magician at work. You're a magician. You are, uh, you are, creating reality as you go we are all uh creators in the end result that's what we're here learning to do um it's 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 important to take a step back to understand that there is a destruction going on but in the in the midst of that the number of creators coming into their own and recreating reality as we go and 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 basically turning the dark to light etc uh, that's our job and that's what we're doing uh, and it's it's important to start to you know take those tools in hand in a conscious way, because people unconsciously are always creating reality as they go. They're creating their own reality every day, and some of them become powerful enough to create other people's reality at the same time, um, and to join together to create like a like we, what we've got going on here, a sort of field of consciousness that then goes out and and has an impact in the world around it. 
Um, that is what is happening. Okay. Uh, and, and so it's important to know the unification of world creators, uh, joining up their minds in a field of consciousness on a positive way. This is going to change our reality. And this is the tool we have at hand. This is the tool that frightens them the most. Uh, you can appreciate that a zombie scenario making you mindless. If you're a threat, if they can't just kill you outright, then uh, turning you into a mindless zombie, which is a, what a lot of people that kind of subsist on, on drugs and television are, um, this is really their end result so that they can manage you. Uh, and then they put, I mean, you know, Mark Richards said it, I think better than anyone has, uh, that they basically want to create a, a, a population of super soldiers, docile super soldiers that follow orders to a T. Uh, that way they've got you, uh, you know, you are, are useful to them on whatever levels, and then at the same time, uh, they can tell you to self-destruct if that's what they want you to do. Okay, so they'll just have us pull our own, uh, punch our own ticket then if they, they want to get rid of us. You know, uh, how much progress do you think they're making on, you know, reducing the global population by 90%? That, that's always been a stated goal. Um, where are we at on that? How, what kind of progress are they making? Our, our, and why are they afraid of us? I mean, if, if they've got these agendas to eliminate us, why are they afraid of us? Well, again, consciousness is king. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, they, they apparently, now I don't know if this, if this is actually accurate, but I have heard that 2016 is some kind of cutoff point for, uh, what are basically 4D entities that don't go above 4D. Uh, 4D being where you get a lot of the lower level aliens, uh, ETs who have agendas that are, are power over others and where the, a lot of the reptilians uh, the Illuminati with reptilian DNA, highly activated, uh, come from and can't go beyond. They're not, they're, they have no ascension pathway. And so what happens is, uh, I don't know why some people have pulled that, that year out of a hat. I'm, I wouldn't, you know, go by that on, in my view, but, um, but I would say that there are some people feeling that the Illuminati have set for themselves 2016 as some kind of cutoff point beyond which if they don't get certain programs rolled out, uh, they won't be able to. Now it may have to do with the critical mass of, of creator beings coming into full awareness here on planet Earth that changes the trajectory. Uh, I'd say it's already happened. I mean, the critical mass has been reached, I believe. Uh, that was what 2012 was all about. Uh, so at this point, what we're doing is we're garnering our, uh, basically our strength our, uh, is growing. And so in the face of that, therefore, they have to become more desperate in their measures as things go on. Uh, so they're de definitely afraid of us, and and we are a force to be reckoned with. Believe me. Um, and and you know it. The fact is that that becoming you know in the early days, Camelot was out there by themselves, uh, videotaping basically uh, truth tellers and and whistleblowers. Now everybody and their brother are doing it. Um, everyone's got a radio show. I mean, I swear to God, on Revolution, every time I had a guest, that guest got offered a radio show. No, I'm serious. Uh -huh. is, uh, I know it's it's kind of cute. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah. laughs> oh so, boy. So so no, I mean you know, and and the bottom line is everyone wants to get. It's now the flavor of the month to actually tell the truth. Uh, believe it or not, it's it's wild. So this so, is why well, you get Hangar One wanting to talk to to uh, Captain K from the Secret Space Program. You know, they really. Uh, it's really funny. You know, they the gap is so wide between the two civilizations now. The uh, what we call the rogue civilization that is the Secret Space Program that is run by the way by the U.S. and Russia, Great Britain uh, and Germany and France, kind of uh, holding up the back end, so to speak. Uh, you know, so so be 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 aware of that. You know, um, the game here on Earth is a whole different game. As far as you can tell, you know what what is the the status of the secret space program? How you said earlier that there you thought there were about a ten thousand year gap, and you know that that doesn't mean much to me because you look at how much we've evolved in the last hundred years with known technology. How much more has the the unseen technology developed? You know what what sort of technologies are we talking about? What's what what's what do they have we don't see? Do you any, any clues? Well, I mean, one of the things that you know M Captain Mark Richards talks about is uh, is is using fueling uh, to go jump uh, interdimensionally and uh, and I guess interstellar 
using uh, neutron stars uh, that were previously previously exploded. Um, that's one of the key forms of technology that we're, we're not supposed to have, that they do have now, uh, that they have it with the help of certain ET groups. Um, so they are also growing in leaps and bounds. The 10,000 year in advance uh, quote comes from one of my whistleblowers uh, quite a while ago, told us that. Um, you know, other people might use different numbers, but who cares? You know, yes, the technology is off. And I mean, free energy is just the beginning of of the sort of possible technologies. If you listen to my interview last night with Richard Allen Miller, he actually talks about more technologies that that he's talking about here in the public sector that they're just sort of stumbling on. That in fact they've been working with, uh, you know, in the secret space program, God, for years. So well, I, I I really think that's one of the reasons that that he's been targeted for uh, some of this, you know, uh, bad things that have been happening to him. Sure, uh, you know, I mean, this is true of Cash as well. We're talking about a uh, cold fusion. We're talking. About well, let me, let me let me talk about Mr. Cash. I have an update from him. You know, he was taken to the hospital a couple of days ago, oh. and he was a victim of arsenic poisoning. There you go. And he's recovered. He's home, and oh. uh, we're 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 trying to get some meetings scheduled with him to, uh, to to go over and see actually what technology he has. But but yeah, that's uh, I got that from the horse's mouth that uh, that well, he was a, no, no, a victim of arsenic poisoning. Uh, right before we went to see him, uh, and that that trip was uh, if for people that don't know, um, I, we were going to go meet him in person just recently, and got deathly ill the night before. Uh, and and now he was attacked directly. Uh, you know this kind of stuff. What's you know what is interesting though is that there is a pattern out there that I wanted to talk about. And I know the show is almost about to end. We don't have time oh, to go into too much depth. Take, take the time uh, you got. Maxwell had everything he owned. He he had been given a place to live in Panama that was going to be expense free for him. He moved all of his stuff in storage. The storage burned to the ground. He lost everything. He lost all the Manly P Hall. Uh, you know, investigations that were, were bequeathed to him when Manley P. Hall, this incredible investigator, uh, into the Illuminati, um, died. And, uh, he lost everything. And so, uh, you know, this kind of attack, we have Richard Allen Miller being attacked, uh, everything being wiped off his computers. Um, you know, we have direct attacks on the people out here, uh, like ourselves that are telling the truth. And I was told by a whistleblower behind the scenes that now Gordon Duff, um, veterans today, uh, the reporters that, uh, that are all working with Gordon, uh, have been, have received a phone call and been told to shut up. Uh, now I, hopefully they won't listen, but, uh, now I'm just going to tell you that, that, um, uh, this has been told. Carrie, to Carrie, I, I've been given the same thing. Yes. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's come across my desk. Yeah. I, I was told that I needed to to mitigate my my rhetoric uh, in, in no uncertain terms. And you know what? Um, like I said, I fear no men. Let's just say that, and I'm, I'm not going to to take this this leg down. Uh, I'm going to keep talking the talk, and it, it is your rights going around. And uh, now is the time for for us to dig in, fight even harder than ever, get the truth out there every possible way we can. That's right. Yeah. Spread the word, people, because we're in this together. It's your world. It's our world. Let's save it from these, these madmen. Okay. Well, Carrie, thank you so much. We're out of time. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll be back next week to talk to you some more. Carrie, you uh, keep up the good work. I mean, and everybody, go to projectcamelot.org and uh, punch your donate button as well. And, and if you have extra money, come to the uh, freedomslips.com uh, and press our donate button as well. And listen Thanks. to me tonight, 7 p.m. on a Super Bowl. All right, I'll be there. Talk to you later, Carrie. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio.